Good morning, class. How are you guys? So good. Good. Today we're going to be talking about how to annotate a text. But before I get into everything on the board, I want to teach you a little cheer. Okay? Cool. You're so excited. So I'm going to say, mark it up, and you're going to say, and read. So let's practice. Mark it up. And, and read. read. Annotate. To understand. understand. Yep. So let's practice one more time. Mark it up. And, and read. read. Oh. Annotate. To and understand. understand. Cool. So just from that cheer, what do you think annotating a text means? Understanding a text. Yeah. Understanding a text. So if you meet someone new for the first time, you have a conversation with them. You want to see how they are. You make ideas based on what they look like and how they sound. Just with a body of text, you do the same thing. But when we read, we typically skip over that part and just rush through it, and then we don't understand what we're reading. So when you annotate, you're interacting with the text. That's the most important part. And what I want you guys to learn from this today is how to do that. It seems really hard in the beginning, but when you get into the practice of the steps of annotating a text, it becomes really easy. So let's say this is your book of paper. Let's pretend that these squiggly lines are words that you don't want to read or don't feel like reading in your literature class. You want to circle things that are unfamiliar. If there's something that you've never seen before, if it's a vocabulary word, if it's something that is just totally out of the blue to you, you want to circle it. You will box things that are important. When you come to class and you have a discussion and the teacher says, okay, what did you read? And you're like, something on page 45. You want to be able to go to that specific thing that you saw and say, I boxed this, this is important, this is what I want to bring up in class. When we underline text, and if you don't like writing in books, you can always use a post-it note, you want to underline important ideas, typically in a highlighter or a different color pen, just because that brings attention to the eye and it shows, like, I underlined this, this is something that I want to bring up. Yes. How many things should you underline? Anything that seems important to you. So everyone reads differently. If me and you are having a conversation and I make a change in the conversation, I change when I'm talking about the subject, you want to say, okay, that's important, that's a change in the text. That's an example of something that you will underline. Now, also I have a plus and minus. You can plus something to the text and say, okay, I agree with that. I agree with what the author is doing, I agree with this style change, I agree with this point. This helps when you're making your paper based on what you read because you can go back to the exact points and say, okay, I agree with this point. I underlined it, it was important. You can do the same thing with a minus, like mm, I don't agree with that. And then you can use your margins. What are margins? Within the paper? And margins are, it's the space around the paper. It's the top, it's the bottom, it's the side. I would say that you would use the left margin or the right margin to your most ability. The left margin would be used to take notes. Yes, you're underlining, you're circling, you're um, boxing, but if you don't know what that means, it doesn't have any significance. So when you're reading back and you're skimming back over your notes, this is making it as easy as possible to go back and point out what you read. The notes really help in the left margin. The right margin, you would ask questions like, okay, I agree with this, but it doesn't match up to the first chapter, or this is important, but I want to know why later. It's a question you would ask me when we're actually having a discussion about the text. And finally, you would react with the paper. Just like we have conversations and I laugh at your jokes, or I say, mm, I don't like what you said, you could say that in your paper. This is your book. This is your piece of writing. If you want to put a smiley face, like, that made me happy, or OMG, why did he just say that? This is what you do in your text, so when you're reading it over, you have fully understood the majority of the text. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Can I use this in college? You can use this in college. This is very important for research papers. It's very important for your literature classes. It's very important for those big textbooks with lots of information. This is the way you do um, interaction with the text so you can dissect it into easier portions that are easier to understand. Yes? Does this help me comprehend everything? It does help you comprehend it. Okay. Thank you 
so much, guys. You're awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. You're going to be such a good